Good afternoon, everybody. We we'll, sorry, we'll get started in just a couple of minutes and we'll let the participants filter in. Once it starts slowing down, we'll get going. So we'll give it another minute or so. All right, we will go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining and welcome to the BAMS Jurisdiction Onboarding Series. Today our, is our organization and employer portal deep dive session. This is being recorded. If you are not comfortable with being recorded, go ahead and sign off. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to our training term uh, team. Let me first introduce myself. I am Susan Pierce Richards and I am the uh, lead for the VAMS on the CDC side. Hi, and I'm Jenna Rowland, and I'm on the training team for VAMS, and I work with the CDC to develop training materials to promote success of, among all of its users. Thanks, Jenna. So in today's session, we will be taking a closer look at the employer role in VAMS, and walk through the key tasks the employer or organization will need to complete in the system. Just before we close, we're going to pause to answer questions that accumulate through this session. You can submit the questions to this specific topic using the Q&A pod at the bottom of the Zoom window. Once we make our way through the Q&A, we'll share a few reminders and then close the session. We may wrap up sooner than an hour. If that's the case, you'll get a little more time back on your day. Uh, next slide, please. As I mentioned, we're in the deep dive portion of the jurisdiction POC onboarding series. Uh, last week, we had the orientation sessions one and two and reviewed the training materials that will be provided to the jurisdiction POCs. And every Friday through the 20th of November, we will continue to host the VAM town hall where you can ask additional questions about VAM's implementation. The calendar invitation for each town hall includes a poll everywhere link so you can submit questions ahead of time. Next slide, please. So today we really want to help you understand the main roles and responsibilities of the employer coordinator and understand the steps employer coordinators need to take within VAMS to fulfill their role in successful vaccine administration. And I want to re reiterate today that we will be focusing specifically on the employer's role and that portal view in the VAMS, and we aren't planning to discuss policy or operational guidance or business process related to VAMS. Um, there will be other venues to ask questions along these lines, but today it's focused on the employer coordinator role in VAMS. Next slide, please. So moving on to employer coordinator responsibilities. Next slide, please. So as an employer coordinator in VAMS, you will be able to register your own organization, upload employees, utilize support resources as needed, and training resources such as the model training plan, the user manual, and the FAQs will be available as a navigational aid as you execute these activities in VAMS. Jenna will now take you into the system and show you the detailed steps required to execute these tasks. Jenna? Thanks, Susan. Okay, so I will start sharing my screen here. Okay, let's see. Um, Matt, if you could tell me if you can see my screen? We can see Something your screen. Yes. Perfect. Yes? Okay. The VAMS portal, jurisdiction portal. Okay, great. So uh, today we're going to pick up where we left off last week in the jurisdiction POC demo. That was, uh, I believe, last Wednesday, 
where JJ took us through what it is to be a jurisdiction POC and what they need to do within this jurisdiction portal. And last week, the jurisdiction POC added the Detroit Nursing Association as one of the organizations within their jurisdiction. So today, we're going to walk through um, what it is like to be a, an employer coordinator for one of these um, organizations. So the jurisdiction POC has added Edwards Construction into the system. The employer coordinator is Justin Edwards. And so we will spend a day in the life of Justin Edwards today and walk through what that what he needs to do as an employer coordinator and what he can do in VAM. Um, I want to bring your attention to the status column over here. So because Justin hasn't activated his account or registered the organization in VAMS, the status is pending. For this construction company right here, or company rather, um, they have gone in and created an account and registered their organization and therefore it is showing as active in the system. So once this um, organization has been added in VAMS, Justin Edwards, the employer coordinator, will receive an email um, from CDC at VAMS, let's see, it was uh, at VAMS.org. This is what the email will look like. And this is the registration link here that he will click. And once he clicks that, he will be taken to this screen. And so what you'll see here is that Justin's username is his email address right here. And so he will always, he will use that email address to log into VAMS moving forward. Here, he will go in and create a password, verify that password. And then as you will see in this field, this is for the two-factor verification code that is required upon every login into VAMS. And so he will go into his email account and find that um, email and type in that five-digit code right here. They, he will click uh, the box that he has agreed to the specific terms and click create account. After creating the account, he will immediately be launched into the organization and employer portal um, homepage for Edwards Construction. This is the information right here, the salutation, first, last name, phone, and email address. All of this information was entered into the system by the jurisdiction POC when they added the organization in the, in, into VAM. So Justin can go in and uh, make any corrections or add any information that he would like. If you'd like to put a phone number here, he can. Um, but he's confirming that all of this information is correct. And then he's going to hit next. And he'll be taken to the organization information page. This is where they can go in and select. This has already been selected by the jurisdiction POC. But the organization category, this is indicating what kind of organization this is. Um, and for this one, they are a critical infrastructure construction company, which is why they're being added. So their address has been added into VAMS by the jurisdiction POC. Again, um, Justin Edwards can come in and make any edits that he sees fit if the mailing address is incorrect. They can add a phone number another email address or maybe a more general email address for the organization if they want, and then the web, the web address. Then they'll click Next. And again, he'll review that all of this information has been entered correctly. If it is not and he wants to make um, edits or corrections, he can always click Previous and be taken back to previous pages. Since everything here is correct, he's going to click that checkbox and confirm that everything is accurate. And once he's clicked next, he will immediately be taken to his portal homepage for Edwards Construction. So, once an employer coordinator has activated their account and registered the organization in VAMS, which is what they just did, we just walked through, um, they will use the system to add their employees or volunteers in VAMS so that they can become eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccination. This can be done um, in a few ways. 
One is they can allow their employees or volunteers to register through policy-enabled registration. The employer coordinator can add those employees or volunteers into VAMS individually or via bulk upload. Or they can add employees using all three of, the, all three of those methods, which we will walk through right now. So first we will talk about Policy Enabled Registration, or PER, first. So Policy Enabled Registration allows an organization to send a common registration link to their employees or volunteers that they can use to register themselves in VAMS. The first step in enabling Policy Enabled Registration is the jurisdiction POC will need to communicate with the employer coordinator of an organization to see if they want to enable enable PER for their organization. If so, the employer coordinator can provide up to three email domains for the jurisdiction POC to add to their organization's record in VAMS. That must be done when the jurisdiction POC is adding the organization in VAMS, as you cannot go in and edit that record once it's been added. So these email domains, as shown right here, there's two of them right here, um, they, the employer coordinator has to provide email domains um, that are either owned by their company or a company they're affiliated with. They cannot use third-party email service domains such as Yahoo Mail or Gmail. So in this example, the jurisdiction POC has communicated with um, Justin Edwards, the employer coordinator at Edwards Construction, that they want to offer policy-enabled registration for their employees. And the, and the employer coordinator has provided two email domains for the jurisdiction POC to enter into the organization's record in VAMS, which is what they did. So we have these two email domains right here. So this link right here, the employer coordinator would copy this link and email it out to all of their employees or volunteers in one email. Anyone that receives that regist this registration link in that email can click on that link and begin registration in VAMS. The people that click on the link must have email addresses that either use this email domain or this email domain. This is for this example. So if I am logging in and I have an email domain that is different than one of these two and I've clicked on this and I try and register, it won't work because my email domain doesn't match one of these two that have been set forth by the employer coordinator. So once they have um, emailed out this link to their employees, the employees access BAMS using that organization-specific link, this one, and enter their organization email, organization email using one of the domains that, that is provided here, and their name. The system will validate the email entered by the employee, um, validate that they have the same domain as one of the domains provided by um, the employer coordinator, and then VAMS will send a unique registration link to that employee's email address. They will use that registration link to start the, the, the standard registration flow for pre-screening and then entering personal information, medical information, insurance, and additional organizational details. Once this, um, they have registered in the system, the employees, they cannot change their email address after they've um, completed registration. So, if an, an employee goes in and registers themselves by using this registration link, they will then show up in this list of my employees down here. So, policy-enabled registration is really a benefit to the employer coordinator because it allows their employees to essentially add themselves in VAMS by clicking that registration link and then they're you know, added into VAMS after they've clicked the registration link. The other way of adding in employees into VAMS for an organization is entering them individually, one by one, 
or importing them via bulk upload. So the next process that I will demonstrate is adding an employee into the system so that they can uh, receive a registration email, their own registration email. So for this example, we are going to add Tanya Anderson. And her email address is here. So the three pieces of information you need for an employee that you're adding into VAMS is their first name, last name, and email address. As you can see, all of the fields in VAMS throughout this throughout this entire program is if there's a field that's marked by a red asterisk, it is required. So we're going to click Save. And we'll click Finish. And now we will see that Tanya Anderson has been added to the list of employees that has been sent an email registration um, an email that includes a registration link for her to go in and uh, register in VAMS herself. So once you have added somebody in, it triggers that email to be sent to her immediately. Once she receives the email, she will go in and click the registration link and move forward through that standard registration process that everybody, all the recipients need to go through. The next process we will go through is importing uh, a list of employees. So if you have a long list of employees that you want to enter, so say you have 100 employees and you don't want to go in and add them one by one, you want to import a list, you can go into the employ import employees functionality. Okay. So. As you'll see, this pop-up window will appear and you, um, the employer coordinator will click this template link right here. And when they click that, an Excel file will pop up here and they will open that. And as you can see, this template simply has the same three fields that we just saw um, when adding one employee. So we have the first name, last name, and email address. So the employer coordinator needs to populate this uh, template with the first, last name, and email addresses for the employees that they want to add in VAMS. So I've already done that. I've already prepared um, a list for us to use here. And what we're going to do is um, we have four employees here. So we have Richard Elkins, Bill Thompson, Jan White, and Lisa Young. So I don't know if you've noticed, but on that first page where we were on the My Employees list, Bill and Richard have already been added in the system. So we're going to add them in this list for to demonstrate what happens when you try and add people that have already been added in VAM. We are going to add Jan White. She has not been added in the system here. And then for Lisa, we're just going to leave that blank because we want to demonstrate what happens if someone um, just forgets to populate that field with information. And that information as a, the results bulk upload um, spreadsheet will show us the results of our upload here in a second. So once this information has been added into the template, it's very important for the employer coordinator to save this um, sheet as a UTF-8 CSV file. If they save it as an Excel workbook or any of these other file formats, it will not be uploaded in VAMS. So it is very important that they use the CSV file format. We're going to save that. And then we will close out. And I'm going to upload that file. And once you upload this file, there will be 
a notification up here that the file has been added to the import queue and the employer coordinator will receive an email once the import has been completed. So we're going to click close. And then we're going to go down here to the employee import tab. Down here, so I've already imported um, a couple different lists in preparation for this call. But right here, you'll see in this table that there was an import that was done on October 21st at 1121 AM. So you will click on this. And you will go into the import employee import details page. This page shows the details of the import. So the employer name is Edwards Construction. It was created by Justin Edwards as that is the employer coordinator logged in. He created it on uh, October 21st. And then down here in notes and attachments, you will see the original file that Justin uploaded right here down at the bottom, what time it was modified and when it was added. And then this result log for bulk upload is going to tell us the results of the upload. That's exactly it's properly named. So we're going to open this file. And now this looks exactly like the um, template that we just uploaded, except for this column, the status column. So for Lisa Young, if you'll remember, we did not enter an email address for her. So the status will show that she was not uploaded into VAM because that field was required and there was no information there. The status of Richard and Bill Thompson right here, that email already exists in VAM as a recipient. So they were not added in VAMS again. This is here so that duplicates are not added into the system. So you won't have three different Richard Elkins. You'll have one because the system is checking against the email address that has been added for that person. Jan White, who we added for their email address right here, has been successfully uploaded into the system as an employee. And when this says, I, I don't want anyone to get confused about this. So in the employer coordinator um, portal, these people are referred to as employees. Right here, my employees. But they essentially are going to be vaccine recipients, which is why this says the email already exists in the VAM system as a recipient. So Richard Elkins will eventually be that vaccine recipient. That's the difference between um, them being called recipients here and being referred to as employees in the employer coordinator portal. So we will come back here and we will see now that Jan White has been added in the system as an employee. All of these individuals will receive their own emails that include registration links so that they can go in and register in VAMS for um, the vaccination. So one of the final things that I'll show you today is um, how the employer coordinator needs to go in and add themselves as an employee of the organization if they want to become eligible to receive the, the COVID-19 vaccination. So they would go in and add themselves exactly the same way as we added anybody else. So we will go in and add our employer coordinator, whose name is Justin Edward. The employer coordinator will use the same email address for themselves that they use to log in as an employer coordinator. And then we'll click save. After they click save, Justin Edwards, the employer coordinator, will receive a registration email for him to go in and register um, himself as a recipient in VAMP. And he will see, once he has um, logged in and completed all of the um, steps 
needed for becoming a recipient, which we will go through that process next week in another demo. When he goes to log into VAMS afterwards, he will use the same username, which is his email address, the same password that he uses to log into this portal. And once he does, he will then see that he has two portals to choose from. He can now log in as a recipient by clicking accessing, by, excuse me, by clicking access portal on the recipient portal, or he can ask, access the organization employer portal by clicking here. And once he's logged in, you will also be able to come up here and click the drop down arrow and switch portals or log out. So, the final thing I'd like to show you is the employer coordinator has access to VAM support when they need it by clicking the help link and going to the help page. The help page has frequently asked questions for employer coordinators. I'll just let the system refresh here for a second. Well, of course. So this was working earlier, of course, and uh, now it just must be my uh, Wi-Fi that's causing a delay. But essentially, they will click the help page. They will come to the um, to this page. There will be frequently asked questions that they will see, and that is related to the employer coordinator, or excuse me, organization employer portal. They will have a search button at the top of the page where they can start typing in um, a question or a topic and the FAQs will sort and filter based on that topic. So, uh, since we can't see that, that's unfortunate, but that's okay. Um, that concludes the demo for the um, employer organization portal today. So I'll stop sharing my screen. And Matt, if, there you go. Okay, okay back Thanks, to Jenna. you, Susan. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jenna. So we have